Lightning news for Harry. Meg promotes his appearance in the media to leverage his divorce plan. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple, Harry and Meghan Markle, on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Well, Harry's name is in the news again, but I thought he just wanted his privacy, right? You know, I'm actually kind of surprised and no one out there has made a meme yet with that written on a subtle banner that's hanging over the fireplace during Harry's controlled interview where he got to say whatever he wanted to say with no challenges and no interruptions. Seems like Meghan Markle is Harry's new agent slash pimp, hawking him for TV appearances while she's sitting on the sideline and putting money into coffers that she's going to get when she walks away. I think Harry needs to be asking himself right now, why is Meghan not putting her smug face out there to get herself some publicity? But anyway, this is how Harry is making his money now. It's pathetic. But you know what? In about two years, if not sooner, the two of them are going to be divorced. And you know, if they're real, I really feel sorry for these two children. They have been put in harm's way thanks to living with a drug addict, probably two drug addicts. Uh, can you imagine the stories they're going to be able to tell when they grow up? And also the behavior issues they probably will have, again, if they're real. And I'm guessing Meghan Markle has some very good reasons for laying low about right now. Harry claims that he's doing all of this to help others and for service. But you know what? Service, in my opinion, and actually according to the dictionary, is when you selflessly offer yourself expecting nothing in return. But Harry is getting far from nothing. Harry's getting publicity, he's getting money, and he's also trying to promote that stupid book. I'm sorry, but that is not service at all. Harry is just selling a product. He needs to be transparent about that. <sighs> Everything they have started, the reality show they did for Netflix, the Spotify podcast series from Megan, the live interviews, the print interviews, Harry's book, all of that is supposed to bring in money for Netflix, Spotify, Penguin Random House, Variety, Apple, Cut, Oprah, CBS, etc., etc. Not a one of these entities actually has their best interests at heart. Instead, they're all just trying to make as much money as they possibly can while they still can, including Meghan and Harry. Why would a publisher encourage Harry to reveal such damaging information? Where was his agent in all of this? Oh yeah, wait a minute, it's Meghan just trying to make some money. And why would Netflix or Spotify broadcast such public hatred from the two of them? Where exactly was the production team, I wonder? And did their agents, if they've got them, even look at the Variety and Cut articles before they were published? While making money for their bosses and themselves, of course, Meghan and Harry have sacrificed their credibility and their reputations, and they can never get those back. Is there nobody out there who can finally stop this train wreck in motion? Have agents and business managers become yes-men instead of actually giving good advice? I think Meghan and Harry have been taken for a ride by their PR team, their agents, their business managers, and of course, their lawyers too. It's shocking that they have willingly embarked on this disastrous journey. It reminds me of the very public breakdown that we witnessed with Britney Spears and Amanda Stiles had the same thing going on. In this age, supposedly, we are focusing on the importance of discussing and recognizing and understanding our mental health problems, but all of these commercial entities have done the exact opposite by exploiting the two of them. Clearly, Megan and Harry are very disturbed. But I guess as long as that keeps the money rolling in, it's okay, right? It's all about my truth, my filter, my lens. You know, though, I am glad that Meghan and Harry have exposed themselves for what they really are. Eventually, they will live to regret their dismissal of the royal advisors, who considered every eventuality as well as the long-term impact their behavior would have on the royal family. But I guess that is a big difference between Hollywood and the British royal family. Hollywood is just focused on money and also how things look superficially, but the royal family is focused on the longevity of the monarchy. So now it's looking like we're entering the satirical phase of Meghan and Harry. Just look at South Park, look at what Chris Rock did. This is a phase in which Meghan and Harry are out of the loop, and they're not going to realize any financial gain from the public humiliation by the comedians. And this is only the start, because bashing Meghan and Harry is profitable, and the masses are wanting more. An interesting way to start off this year of reconciliation, as they put it. We're only in the third month. I think there's going to be a lot of ridicule coming. 
Suge Smith knew his comeuppance by Chris Rock was coming. He just didn't realize how cutting his comeuppance would be. I thought the timing was amazing, though. The Oscars are just a week away. Chris Rock had an entire year to practice his routine, and Netflix understands timing, as we've already seen. There is one thing we can say for sure about Meghan and Harry, though. They're going to keep on providing excellent material for their destruction. And where does Harry get off thinking that he's so much better than the rest of us, that he needs to come down and share his worldly wisdom with all of us, that he and he alone has suffered such unspeakable trauma and none of us can relate to it? A father who didn't hug him? Oh my goodness, what a rare thing indeed. And so Harry's now recommending that all of us take some mind-altering drugs to help us with our problems. Oh, is that the official line from Better Up, I wonder? The doctor who interviewed Harry is very controversial in his treatment methods, including the use of this mind-altering drug that Harry is praising so much, and also encouraging this victimhood mentality where you blame everybody else for your problems. Now, this doctor also has a book to sell. Hmm, is it a coincidence? And it's the same publisher, too. I don't know what doctor in his right mind or her right mind would encourage a patient to take these drugs. I mean, come on. That's going to make them a lot worse off than they were before. I mean, Harry, what in the world are you talking about? Why do you think you have authority to speak on these matters? I guess you're just serving us with your wisdom. But the sad thing is, your wisdom is not very wise. Now, I think that Harry is just a spoiled brat. Nobody ever told him no. Nobody ever taught him how real people live their lives. Nobody ever taught him the proper boundaries that people require. Maybe if Harry started an organization and was the poster child of spoiled child syndrome, people are actually going to want to listen to what he has to say because clearly he wouldn't be lying about that. And as for PTSD, well, that is a very real affliction indeed. But Harry, exactly what was your horrible trauma that none of us have also experienced? There are many people in the world who lost a parent when they were young, but it is not fair for him to use that as an excuse to act so awful or to play the victim. Military trauma from playing video games? Yeah, I don't think so. There were other people who were fighting an actual war, so you did not get PTSD from sitting in your bunker playing Xbox. And now Harry's trying to convince us that he looks more like his late mother than William does. <laughs> okay, well clearly there is something wrong with his mirrors. Or maybe it's all those psychedelic drugs that he's taking he cannot see straight anymore. Does he see Megan's reflection behind him, I wonder, when he looks in the mirror? That is her trying to convince him of this stupid idea. Not only does she want Harry to believe that she is the reincarnation of Diana, but it sounds like she's also trying to convince him that he's turning into the late Diana. This is just insane. And Harry's claiming that the more people criticize him, the more that he needs to be of service to everybody. Okay. Well, maybe he tells himself that he's doing us all this great service, but in actuality, he's like that annoying little brother who's like a no-see-em gnat that keeps buzzing around our heads. We just want to swat him to make him finally go away. Speaking of which, Harry, why don't you go look for your privacy? I can tell you it is not in this public sphere where you keep putting yourself. What exactly do you even have to offer? Is your solution for everybody just to take drugs and disassociate and betray our own families? Is running away from our problems a solution that we all desperately need? Harry, here's a little clue. We don't need your service. We're doing just fine on our own. Clearly, Harry is an addict, and he's a liar. And once he faces the truth that his mother's parenting was not perfect, once he stops blaming other people, once he takes responsibility for his problems, then maybe he can start healing. It's actually very tragic, and on some level, I do feel sorry for him. Either Harry or somebody else is exploiting this weakness, and they're doing it to make money, which I think is wrong. But see, Harry's making a mistake by putting his late mother on this pedestal that she could never have done wrong. So he believes he has to be the bad one, and he self-medicates, and he blames other people to keep that pain at bay. I think instead of just accepting the blame, he's blaming other people. And these feelings of resentment and spite are what are fueling his addictions. It really is like the gas that's fueling the fire. 
Until Harry can come to accept that his mother was not perfect and that she made mistakes, he's not going to be able to forgive her and he won't be able to stop blaming himself or other people. And I don't think Megan is helping at all in this area. Instead, she keeps glorifying Diana to the point of sainthood, and that convinces Harry that she really was a saint. So that makes their relationship so toxic and so addictive, too. And I think that's why William, as far as we know, has been able to live a much healthier life. He understands that his mother's parenting skills were hardly perfect, but he's dealt with it in a very healthy way by just accepting the reality of the situation. One insider expressed disappointment when it comes to Harry. Poor thing, he is upset that all he heard everybody say is that William is Diana's twin, and nobody told him he looked like Diana. He looks nothing like his mother, that's his problem now. I'm realizing why we don't see the kids, because A, they don't favor Diana, and B, they're probably darker than Meghan Markle wanted them to be. What do you think of Harry's fatal missteps? Let us know your thoughts below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave us a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.